everyone and welcome back to Dubious Engineering. Today we're going to understand why this lovely vernier caliper here has got a faded display. This Digimatic by Mitotoyo, this vernier caliper here, was given to me because it had a faded display. Let's turn it on. I wonder, can you see that display? Yeah, it's really difficult to see it. Let's take this thing apart and see if we can figure out what the problem is. I believe it's going to be the rubber zebra connector between the LCD display and the PCB. Let's see how this thing works and let's get it repaired and make it useful again. This here is a cheap Chinese alternative. Tip with these, with all of these devices, don't leave them closed because if you do there's a high risk corrosion is more likely to take place and clearly you don't want corrosion on the jaws of these things it's going to affect your ability to be able to get good results from them i've gone ahead and i've got some screwdrivers ready and i've also got here a couple of spanking new ag13 batteries i think these are also called lr44s one thing that i do have with this is a an actual mitotoyo protection cover a little condom which basically keeps that gap ever so slightly open and it protects the spiky points of these guys let me just briefly show you how to use these so this would be how to measure an outside diameter in order to measure the inside diameter of something what you would do would be to use these calipers here on the opposite end if you wanted to measure the depth of something, you would use here this little guy. And what you can do is you can push it down like that. And that would effectively equate to obviously the same distance between the jaws at the top here. So there we go. Very, very basic demonstration on how to use that. It's important to make sure that your screwdriver fits well because you don't want to be ruining these screws they're going to be very difficult to find replacements for as always with these projects it's a good idea to have somewhere to put your screws you really don't want to lose them removing those four screws gives us the ability to be able to remove this entire assembly and what we have in here are a few push buttons an lcd a battery holder and then on the back here a little PCB with some sensors on it and those sensors are going to be looking at magnets on this scale and effectively as you move up and down the scale here the magnets on the scale will traverse up and down the sensors on the PCB and the PCB will then be able to count upwards or count downwards, depending on which direction you're traveling. A little bit of grease on here. So there it is. That's, uh, that's the PCB there. And again, we've got a couple of screws to remove from this PCB. Little tiny screw. And actually, whilst we're taking this apart, we might as well just remove the thumb wheel grabber. There you go. It's got the black screw and put the thumb wheel in there as well if we just roll that onto its back there we go look at that the pcb has flopped out <laughs> there's half a ton of goop in here i don't know if you can see that but uh i would say that's probably likely to be machine tool coolant anyway what i wanted to draw your attention to the back of this LCD here has got this little rubber connector on it. And the rubber connector, you'll see it's got little conductive pads that move downwards. And then between each one of those conductive pads, there's a sandwich of insulating layers. But there's a ton of grease in here and I think that's part of our problem. I think perhaps that grease is probably insulating 
some of those pad conductors. So what we need to do, we need to get this cleaned up with a little bit of uh, IPA alcohol. And uh, then I've got a feeling that when we put this back together, with a little bit of luck, this will work. What, what a really simple little bit of engineering. So the PCB itself then, where my thumb is at the top here, you can see a little blob chip uh, application specific IC. And then what you can see is a little crystal. So there's a, clearly a little microcontroller in there. And, uh, and then you've got the connections, the little finger connections which go to the to the little zebra connector for the LCD display and then you have at the bottom here these little wavy lines on the PCB here are little coils of wire so as this moves up and down those fields change that little chip then can count in one direction or the other direction and display it out on the LCD Okay, so with everything now nicely cleaned up, whoops, apart from the glass or the plastic screen, I've forgotten to clean that. Let's just give that a good rub. There we go. <clears throat> so with everything nicely cleaned up now, uh, we can go ahead and start to try to reassemble everything. Reassembly is relatively easy. We pop the LCD panel in first. It's got its connector face just down here so connect a face towards me if you like there's a little rubber gasket here which goes in place and there's a tiny tiny little lug here which you'll see and then that just holds that rubber gasket exactly in place in exactly the spot where it needs to be then we pop in our little the zebra connector, a little uh, sandwich. Make sure that that's all sort of seated nicely. And then we take our PCB and we make sure that the battery compartment of the PCB is in the right place. There we go. So orient it effectively by the battery compartment of the PCB. And we get our little box of um, box of bits. All right, make sure they're tight, but not too tight. All the buttons appear to to work like they did before. Happy days. And then I guess what we can probably do is pop a battery carefully into that location and obviously we need to make sure that the battery is the right way up and so uh, the contact the the positive of the battery is its largest area weirdly and then the negative is that little face there that little single contact face so pop that in that way up and we can see here that we've now actually got something written on the screen and it's likely it's complaining that it can't see the scales or the magnetic scales on the caliper so happy days that looks very promising and that looks like it might actually work so that said then let's uh let's put it all together and there we have it just to zero that up and there we go and we can see we're repeatable we're not losing any counts because we're hitting that zero position each time so always a good bit of fun measure a piece of paper how thick is a piece of paper look at that about 10 microns sorry about 100 microns something along those lines sorry about the light on the uh on the on the on the plastic reflecting off of the plastic but yeah that works a treat so we can repeatably measure that piece of paper 10 microns get rid of the paper and get back to zero spot on and so there we have it ladies and gents how to fix a Toyo digimatic 
Vernier Caliper. Thanks ever so much for watching. Don't forget, give us a good old thumbs up and we'll see you in the next video. Subscribe if you haven't already. Cheers and beers, people. Bye for now.